Captain Parker. So what we're doing is getting ready to go to Parker's event. So we're kind of reversing the order. At Patriots Day in the morning, this happened at 10 o'clock after the morning of the 19th. When Captain Parker and Reverend Clark rallied the troops after they had lost eight men, you know, with 14 wounded, we then went out to Lincoln on the corner and prepared to re-engage the British column coming back to Boston. So when you think of Captain Parker rallying his troops after he lost his men, family, friends, rally them, he became extraordinary that day and so did all the men. So they re-engaged out in a cliff of a rock, it's like a little, little height still there at the National Park. So that's where we're going. We're doing the reenactment of that and then walking out there and having the battles. In the afternoon we're going to be down at Tower Park for the big battle when Percy comes out for Boston from the British Army to relieve the column because the column is being absolutely obliterated. At that time, 22,000 Minutemen had been called. The only town that didn't come out was Waltham. The rest of the towns came out. 22,000 now are out to actually engage the column as they go back to Boston. Here's your little background. You can come forward to here if you like, or if you want to sit in the stands, that's okay too. rank. Four paces to the front. March. Company will prepare for inspection. Boys, your boys. Fire left. Cast the boat. Raw rammers.
Run, Frank. Four paces to the rear. March. Close, man. December 16, 1773. Each soldier shall provide himself with a good firearm, a steel, wood or iron ramrod, and a spring for sand, a worm, a priming wire and brush, a bayonet fitted to his gun, a scabbard and belt thereof, a cutting sword or tomahawk or hatchet, At least a hundred buckshot, six flints, one pound of powder, forty lead balls fitted to his gun, a knapsack and blanket, and canteen or wooden bottle to hold one quart of water. Failure to obey this resolution shall result in an assessment of a fine. Captain, the training soldiers are respected and well equipped to the best of their ability. Company, shoulder, but shoulder, your firelock. Boys, firelocks. Rest, firelocks. Order, firelocks. Thank 
points of shift, like 11 to 11 points. Rear Ray, take two steps to the front, march. Reverend Clark, you have a few words for us this morning. I do, sir. Order, your pylocks. <coughs> Knees, arms, glass pants. Head of Lexington. It was only this morning that eight men lay dead on this very ground. Brave men whose lifeblood makes this soil sacred. Not only a hallowed place for future generations, but the fertile field from which shall rise a rich harvest of freedom and liberty. As you set forth to right the unspeakable wrongs of this day, to set your bravery against the brutality that was the tyrannical actions of his Britannic his majesty it is important to bear witness to the justice of our cause. Where was the king's righteousness and the king's justice? The desires and works of a monarch are made present in the work of his servants, and so it is made clear whether or not that monarch deserves the loyalty and duty of his subjects. What are we to say when a large body of the king's troops inflicts a murderous folly, not once but several times, upon those who were in the process of peacefully quitting the field to allow those troops to pass unmolested. The liberties and rights of all Englishmen were by his murderous action set at naught and made a mockery. For why did you and your martyred fellows stand here on the common but few hours past, if not to bear witness by presenting your very bodies, that your liberties, your homes, your lives, were inviolate, even in the face of overwhelming force. <laughs> the king's troops were first to fire. That much is clear. The first blood spilled was not theirs. It was ours. Having had our natural and constitutional rights thus abrogated, the source of those rights no longer rests with king or parliament. It lies with us, America. We are in truth America. First to claim the name and identity that will grow from this place to the far reaches of the human imagination, into the outer limits of our immortal souls. Whatever we have been before, we are Americans now. There it is that maintaining that identity is going to involve effusion of blood and sacrifice of life. For what follows from the events of this morning means conflict. Gentlemen, it means war. Others may have thought it, others may have just wished for it, others may have feared it, but we cannot return to the fashion of things as they were. Our presence on the common today and our eight martyred brethren who have sanctified this ground proclaim to the world and most particularly to King and Parliament that Americans are prepared to defend and preserve their rights even at the cost of rebellion. Huzzah! This, for us, is a journey into the unknown, for we do not know what sacrifices will be required of us, nor how many months or years of struggle lie ahead. But of this we can be certain past any doubt, that in the struggle between tyranny and liberty, our God is ever the God of liberty. Amen. For he is the God who brought his people out of slavery in Egypt, into the land of promise. He is a God who across the generations fulfilled his promise in the coming of our Redeemer Christ, who shows to us that in life and death and beyond death that God triumphs, and that the ways of God are not only the ways of righteousness and truth, but of life itself and sacrificial love for family, neighbors, and country. Amen. Amen. Trust in God that soon or late our victory is certain. His Majesty's troops are far from home for the purpose of keeping the past and its power on its throne. Whatever is dear to them lies thousands of miles away at their backs. What is dear to us, soil and home and liberty, is close at hand, and that is a strength that cannot be measured in numbers. We march from the shadows of the past into the fair light of freedom, beyond thrones, beyond kings, 
beyond the tyranny of those who would invade our communities, destroy our homes, kill our citizens, threaten our families, and seek to control our country. Will history remember our actions, our sacrifice? Will the world learn the lesson of this day that tyranny will not be tolerated? Okay. That injustice will be resisted with courage and compassion. That the power of God is on the side of the innocent, the just, and the good. God, may it be so. So it is with high purpose that you walk forward into this day's battle. You go beyond ordinariness into the extraordinary, beyond fear of peril, beyond things that were and toward things that will be, that must be. So shall you face the foe with courage and faith. So shall you stand on the side of all that is righteous and of good report. So shall you go in God's keeping and with God's blessing. Amen. 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 Sergeant. Yes, sir. Prepare the men for the march. Sir. Sir, can I ask, Captain, what is our objective? Where are we going? We have heard nothing from Colonel Gardner. That is true. We have not heard from our commander. Gardner. And because of that, we are actually going to march out to the outskirts of Lexington, where we can set up by Pine Hill, and really by the home sets of Nelson and Hastings. We will set up an ambush to be able to engage the column as they return to Boston. Aye, aye. Company, handle arms. Rescue arm. Fire locks. Shoulder your fire lock. First sergeant. First sergeant, prepare the men for the march. From the right, the right face. Front, march.
Water up, take your hats off, gentlemen. Loosen the call if you need to. Prepare to be dismissed. The right about. Right about. Face. Dismissed. Levity. 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 Thank you, ma'am. Find your exit, Bobby. Rear exit in the rear.
there for another five minutes to 9 30. We have inspection at 10 15. We have about 35 40 minutes to get there. That's the break, okay? steps, please. To the front, march. Good. Tighten it up. Right. Face. Close it up. Close it up. Drive right. Attention. To the wheel. <laughs> so, Deb, I just need you guys to back up a little more. Usually we need five yards.
of the second man who passed on this day by gunfire in April 19, 1775. We honor this man. Say the name. Daniel Lyman. Very good. We bow with me in prayer. The Lord our God, we stand on holy ground with grateful reverence. Honor to common men. Jedediah and Nathaniel. We know their names, but we know that you knew their names long before and will know them forever. You took ordinary men, parts of our community, perhaps fathers and brothers, sons, friends, ordinary men whom you made extraordinary. Your gift of the courage of faith, with the love of country and community, with devotion and sacrifice for family and friendship, and the very land upon which they live. We honor their memory with our own presence and with our devotion to remembering their names forever, remembering their sacrifice and living out our own lives, fighting the injustice they fought in any form it takes before us. Bless us in this desire. Bless their memory to us and to our community as we honor them this day. In the name of Christ, amen. 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 Hammer stalls are on, gentlemen. Hammer stalls on. Thank you. Hammer stalls must be on. Stalls on, gentlemen. Prime and low. Ready? Freeze it! Fire! You did not fire. Dump. Turn around and dump. Order. 